All right, well, I'm here with Tristan Brown at the Blister Summit 2024. We're on day three. I know we've both been enjoying some skiing. Um, so welcome, and yeah, please introduce yourself. I'm sure a lot of people already know who you are, but. Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction. I've uh, been having a lot of fun here, skiing all around the resort. Um, I'm Tristan Brown. Most people know me as Teton Brown. I'm based out of Jackson Hole, and I'm a big mountain free ride skier. Awesome, let's hear a bit more about what's, what you're skiing these days. Sure. So my line of choice is the slap line. And the nice thing about it is there's a bunch of different widths. Um, I'm generally, if the snow's good, like six inches or more on the 112s, um, they've got like a nice big shovel tip and lots of rocker, double tip and tail rocker with some camber underfoot. It's a full wood core, so it's super playful and pretty much does everything I need to do for like big mountain charging terrain. The 104 is probably like my favorite all around, all mountain ski. You can ski it in any terrain. You can rip groomers on it um, or you can ski pow. And then uh, I'll go with the like 92 for um, like full hard pack, like groomer skiing, or if I want to ski some like terrain park or something and you can just arc turns on those, so they're a blast. Awesome, yeah, I was out on these those this morning and uh, impressive carver, and I know a lot of people have been out skiing the slop these last few days, and mm -hmm. it seems like they're enjoying it. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of guys out there, guys and gals, um, and they've been having a blast. Sweet, well, the last few days we've had a bit of mixed uh, conditions, you know, some firm days, and now it's softening up. What's been your ski of choice for the last couple of days? You know, I've actually been on the 92 um, for most of the days. I was starting out on the 104, and then I've kind of just been having fun on that narrow waisted ski. Um, it's kind of like packed powder in a lot of areas, but I've been getting away with kind of just like throwing the skis around quickly. There's lots of moguls out there, which has been fun and like steep tree skiing. So like with that narrow waisted ski, it just whips around faster for hop turns and stuff. So I've been having a blast on yeah, that. Yeah, sweet, that makes sense. Nice, quick, nimble ski and mm -hmm. good for the tight terrain around here and everything exactly. else. Exactly. Awesome, well, Teton, we've been really stoked to have you here. I know a lot of people have been stoked to ski with you and thanks for making it happen. Absolutely, thank you. All right, and now we're gonna bring on uh, Teo with Zag to talk a bit more about the overall lineup. Yeah, so I'm Teo Vanché. Uh, we came straight from uh, Chamonix with my uh, partner, Alan. Uh, I'm Activation Marketing Manager at Zag, so I overview uh, the team, uh, the team athletes, uh, the PR, and all the activations we can do with retailers, online retailers. Awesome, and I think uh, for this here in North America, maybe just give us a bit of a brand overview. Yeah, exactly. So it was a blast this first year at the Blister Summit. Like a lot of people were super curious to come and stop by the booth. And so it's only three years we're on the American market. So we are new to a lot of people, but we're actually a 20 year old brand. Uh, so we, as I say, based in Chamonix, uh, near Les Grands Montés, five minutes by foot. So the story of Zag is, 20 years ago, Stéphane Radiguet, a snowboarder, wanted to create a ski brand that gives him as much fun as he's having on his snowboard. Uh, so this was the purpose of Zag, like having big rockers and big nose on skis 20 years ago. That was uh, something really new. And then we started to tune up the, the lineup, uh, specialized into freeride skiing and into touring. So these are the, our two specialties now. Awesome. Um, well, we just talked to Teton a bit about the slap lineup, and I know you guys have a pretty wide range of skis from there, but maybe yeah. just touch back on the slap for a minute. Um, I know you guys have four models within there, uh, yeah. within that lineup. And then also just speak to maybe the slap versus the slap lady, just so the women who are interested in the ski can get an, a sense of that as well. Yeah, exactly. So I would say that uh, the slap line is kind of what describes the best uh, Zag, what we call the, the Zag feeling. So it's 100% wood core. So that gives you this nice surfy feeling when you are on soft snow. So this started with the 112 and the 104, but we decided to go a bit more all mountain into the range with a 92 and a 98 uh, now in the lineup. So for these four models, we have a uh, ladies model. So basically the shape is the same, but we have like uh, dedicated uh, colorways. 
Um, but still, we work uh, with uh, women skiers, women testers, uh, when we do the prototyping. So yeah, this is shorter skis, of course, but these are also made for women rippers. Awesome. Thanks for that clarification. And then it seems that this year you guys took a bit of a direction change um, with a new ski that's out there on the market that came from the slap lineup. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So this year, so we introduce, no, we are introducing for 2425 the slap light. So the idea came after our first trip to America last year. Uh, we felt that it was important to have a twin tip uh, touring ski into our range and the slap 104 was like the best ski to make something with. So basically we took the same shape of the slap 104 and we put inside it the U-back uh, construction, which is our touring uh, range. So it's 100% uh, Polonia wood core with uh, some carbon and fiberglass uh, construction. We also worked uh, on the attach system of the skin. Can be pretty annoying to attach some skins uh, with twin tip uh, mm -hmm. skis. So we decided to make a hole in the tail and with a hook that you can just put inside. And works pretty well. We tested it a lot. And yeah, pretty happy about this product. We got also an exclusive design that we made with uh, Tommy Nuts, a street artist uh, from France. And we're gonna do lots of stuff with him next year. So stay tuned. Awesome. And it seems that people have been able to take the slap light uphill for some of the touring sessions here at the Blister Summit. With this, uh, so with all those backcountry tours uh, that were organized, lots of people tried you back, but the slap light too. And yeah, pretty happy about the feedbacks. And seems that we got the good product for the good market next year. Awesome. Well, that's great, especially for those that love the slap, but maybe want something a bit lighter to go uphill yeah. or someone who's just looking for a more playful uh, option for going uphill and then skiing down. Yeah, exactly. So this slap light is 100% touring dedicated mm -hmm. for those who would like to have something that is more 50-50 results and backcountry, I would recommend to go on the regular slap 104 mm -hmm. and put like those nice hybrid bindings on it. Yeah, and that makes sense. I mean, it's not a super heavy ski um, yeah. to begin with, so that's awesome. Well, and you've now mentioned the U-Back line a couple of times, um, so maybe do you want to just get into that and describe a bit of what that lineup is? Yeah, so we have now quite a big touring range. Uh, so there is two main ranges, as you mentioned, the U-Back. We have 89, 95, 102, and 112 on the foot. Uh, this is 100% Polonia and carbon fibers. Uh, construction. So the idea of the U-back, um, a bit the same than the beginning of Zag. Uh, touring was not that fun some years ago, let's say it like this. So we wanted to break into this market with light skis, but with super great uh, Daniel abilities. So here we came with the U-back. The idea was just to take down free ride skis, having a flat tail for more icy conditions, steeper condition, and feel a bit more safe on those skis. And we have the U-Back, so 89.95 for those who are looking for touring all, all year long, no matter what the conditions, and want to have something that is super light. And then you have the 102 for the chargers. I love this one, one of my favorites. And the 112 for the deep days. Awesome, and that's not all for backcountry skis. I know you guys have a couple more in the lineup. So yeah, we have the Adret, uh, which means South Face in French, uh, in mountaineering terms. So the idea of the Adret is a bit different from the U-Back. So we have a 78 and an 85 underfoot skis. Um, those skis are gonna be short length compared to the U-Back, uh, really stiff in torsion more carbon uh, into the construction. So these are made for ski mountaineering when you have your skis a lot on your backpack, you want something light and you want something with a really strong grip for, yeah, Chamonix steepest line and yeah. Yeah, so minimally rockered, good edge hold, nice and light. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Um, and then for those more directional skiers who maybe think the slap's interesting, but want something a little bit more stable. What is the ski lineup for that? Yeah, so it's our last uh, range, the Arfan. Last but not least, it's a really nice one too. So to complete the free ride range and the all mountain range, we have 
uh, as you mentioned, directional skis with flat tail, a little bit less rocker. So here we have three skis. We have the Arfang 86, 96, and 106, easy to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, 86, if it's for those people who just want to cruise in the resort, have a nice time, a ski that is super comfortable and easy to use. Uh, the 96 is actually a super good one for all conditions, more or less. Lots of resorts in France have their patrol equipped with these ones and mountain guides are using it too when they go into off-piste skiing in France. And then you have the 106 for those who likes those big open faces and just want to go stupidly fast. It's super stable, super fun ski for, yeah, the ones who want to charge. Awesome. Yeah, and I know that's a ski we've spent a lot of time up here at Mount Crested Butte, yeah. and it's been good for a lot of the terrain we have as well, yeah. especially for our more directional reviewers. So. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And then you said, last but not least, but there's actually another ski out there, a new one that seems to be causing a bit of buzz here at the yeah. Blister Summit. I've seen a lot of attendees on it and it definitely has an interesting shape. So which ski is that? Yeah, so we wanted to introduce something new. It's completely different from all of the other skis we have. It's called Mata, uh, which means hard pack snow in Chamonix dialect. Here we have a complete new construction. So since 20 years, we are doing only 100% wood core construction. With this, we introduce so titanol construction. So we have a nice titanol blade from uh, tip to tail uh, in the ski. We have low rocker profile, super flat ski, a super nice um, asymmetrical design, but the shape is not, mm. so you can ski Left or right, it doesn't matter, even if it looks cooler one way. This ski, it's just, we wanted to have a super nice cover to have blast on the resorts, but we decided to nevertheless make something with 90 millimeters underfoot, so you can have a nice versatility. Uh, yeah, if you want to enjoy a bit of side hits, if there is a bit of powder that day. So I think it's for those ones who, want to discover new sensations in the resort, have something different from the skis they have before. And yeah, we've seen lots of smiles on the Blister Summit for all the people who tried it. So yeah, super happy about the feedbacks too. Awesome, yeah, and it definitely, you know, with the shape and everything, it kind of falls into that like carving or carver category. Um, but then I've seen a lot of people skiing it in bumps and it seems to be a bit more versatile than maybe I initially thought just looking at it, so. Exactly, it's like what we do since forever. We love to do intuitive skiing skis and we want people to directly have fun on the first downhill, so. Yeah, I think with these skis, we're gonna make carving easier for a lot of people. For those skiers with more experience, um, I think they're gonna have a blast on it too, so yeah. Sweet, well that's a pretty comprehensive lineup. It's awesome to see a lot of those skis out in the wild here at the Blister Summit. Um, zooming out a bit, let's just hear a bit more about Zag. I know you guys are designing and prototyping skis in Chamonix. What does that look like? So yeah, like, the motto since 20 years is to like do everything around the product at Zag. So that's why we have this nice prototyping lab with uh, everything that we need to build by ourselves our prototypes. So we have Bastien, who is the shaper, is working since 15 years at Zag, and is sided sidekick, sorry, uh, Paul, who is uh, making the prototypes. So. It gave us like this. It gives us like this nice flexibility um, and really exciting R and D program. So we just make prototypes. We walk five minutes. We are in the Grand Monte Resort. We can test it, review it. Everybody in the team is involved. Uh, we work also with athletes, with guides, um, ski instructor. So. Yeah, we got all those nice feedbacks and we can make great skis out of this. Awesome. And, um, you know, as you continue to break into maybe the U.S. and other areas, what else would you like people to know about Zag? So, as I mentioned, like everything is around the product and uh, research and development. So we are conscious of our, our environment uh, changing. Um, in Chamonix, it's pretty obvious uh, what is happening at the moment. So. We really take this in consideration into our when we design our skis. 
Um, basically, we did our first carbon footprint report, uh, and we call this our Zag Green program. So we're trying to source the, um, the best uh, materials that are durable, performance, and that don't hurt the planet too much, let's say it like this. Uh, you can find all this info on our website that goes deep down into all the materials and the fabrics that we're using in our skis. And yeah, we're pushing this initiative until 2030 and to reduce this carbon footprint by minus 30%. We're on a super good way and yeah, we will probably achieve this uh, sooner actually. Yeah, well that's great. And it's been awesome to have you and the team here at the Blister Summit. We really appreciate you coming over from Chamonix. Sounds like you have a couple of fun weeks lined up here in the States as well. Um, so thanks for making it and we hope to see you next year. Yeah, thank you for inviting us and for sure let's um, Let's see you next year on the slopes. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Dale. Thank you.